we're going to do a quick fill in the blank test here, right? If I say Wheaties, breakfast of champions, right? All right. Nike, just do it. Okay. Uh, I don't know, KFC, it's finger licking good, right? Why do we know these? Were you born knowing those phrases? Were they part of the, the English classes you took when you were in school? No. We know them because advertisers have spent billions of dollars trying to get those into our brains. And we see thousands of ads every day and they work. They influence us. They change our spending habits and they change our eating habits. There are so many things that influence our, our opinions, the decisions that we make. Not all of them are advertising, of course. Some of it is our friends. Our friends' opinions matter to us and we, they influence us. Neuroscientists say that the ways that we use the technology changes the way our brain is structured. So the ways that we interact with the internet literally changes the structure of our brains. And even cell phones and social media, that influences the ways we interact with the people around us. All of these things, they, they shape who we are and what we do and how we act. But if you are a follower of Jesus, then there is another influence at work in your life also. And that influence is the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is shaping you into the image of Jesus. That's God's desire for you. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3 begins, It is God's will that you should be sanctified. Sanctified just means holy. I mean, it means set apart. Being Holy means being like Jesus. When we're sanctified, when we're acting in whole, when we're holy, we are thinking like Jesus. We're loving the people around us the way that Jesus does. We're connecting with God the Father the way that Jesus does. And we obey the Father like Jesus. The good news is that God will give us the power to do this. He has a will for us. But he doesn't just leave us out there hanging. He doesn't just set the standard and then expect us to do it on our own or sit back and watch us struggle. He gives us the power to fulfill his will for us. He will empower us to grow. Over these next 40 days, uh, this is a season of Lent. In the Christian calendar, it's the time leading up to Easter and the celebration of Jesus' resurrection after his death. And this year, as a church, we are looking at ways that our lives can be shaped to be more like Jesus. Sometimes sin gets in the way of us following Jesus. But the good news is that Jesus saved us not only from the penalty of sin. He saved us from the penalty of sin so that we are able to live with God forever. We're able to be in his presence because Jesus has removed the penalty of our sin. But he also saves us from the power of sin. That means that sin no longer controls us. Maybe you've seen the Christian bumper sticker. It says, Christians aren't perfect, just forgiven, right? <laughs> and that's true as far as it goes, but it doesn't really go far enough. It implies that Christians and those who are not followers of Jesus might live in the same way. But the difference is that the believer will be forgiven by God. But scripture says that we're not supposed to live in the same way that the rest of the world does. Romans 6 says, For we know that our old self was crucified with Jesus, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. As followers of Jesus, we used to be ruled by sin. That means we did and we said what sin told us to do. You know, there's something inside us that said, envy that person who has more than you or who is better at something than you are. And we would do that. But now 
we are no longer slaves to sin. So we don't have to obey its orders anymore. Sin is still going to say, lie and cover up that thing so that you don't have to take responsibility for what you did wrong. But we now can say no to that. And we can do what's right. There is no sin that God can't free you from. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, then he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. God saves us from the penalty of sin when he forgives us our sins, but he saves us from the power of sin when he purifies us. He changes us and transforms us to make us new. So maybe we need like new bumper stickers that says, Christians aren't perfect, just forgiven, and becoming like Jesus. <laughs> it doesn't just stop with forgiven. Or just a sinner saved by grace and being changed by grace. Even though we've been set free from slavery to sin, that change, it's a part of our new nature, but it doesn't come easily. It's normal, but it's not just natural. Sometimes we look at people that we consider holy and we think, man, they're just born a good person, right? I mean, they, they've been good since they were a little kid. They've just made good choices. And so we see them as, as holy and we think like, well, that's a, a person who is holy by, because they were born that way. But that's not the case. They were born again that way. When we come to Christ, we are given a new nature, but our old nature doesn't just dissolve. It doesn't automatically go away. Galatians 5.16 says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh denies what is, desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They're in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. So when we feel that inner tug of war between God's ways and sin's ways, you're feeling this conflict between your old nature and your new nature. You don't have to believe that you are destined to continue to fall into the same sins again. Verse 16 says, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. When he's talking about flesh, he's not just talking about our body and the things that our body wants, but talking about that old nature. So we can learn to live under the Spirit's power instead of under our old nature's power. And when that happens, that process of learning to live under the Spirit's power is called spiritual growth. When we learn to live under the Spirit's power, here's what happens. Galatians 5.22 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those things sound a lot like Jesus, don't they? <laughs> now, we don't strive for those things and try to, to make them happen in their lives. Scripture says that they are fruits that grow when the Spirit is in charge of us. Oh, you do have a part to play in this growth, but it's the Holy Spirit's power that makes them grow. God's Spirit empowers us to be transformed. God's Spirit also empowers us to recognize sin. You know, we can't avoid what we can't see, right? Some cars have an anti-collision alert system, that maybe an image on the dashboard or beeping sound that makes whenever you're in danger of getting too close to another object. Of course, it's kind of annoying when you're pulling into your, park, your tight garage or uh, a small parking space. But what it does is measure the trajectory and senses where you're going and whether you might have a problem there. The Holy Spirit can kind of be our anti-sin warning system. John 16, 8, Jesus says, When the Holy Spirit comes, he will provide the, prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. His inner prompting is going to show us what's right with right, his righteousness. Show us where sin is. And show us what judgment is. 
And so that's going to alert us when we're on a trajectory that we're going to act in a way that is not like Jesus. Like we're, we're on our way to hitting a sin barrier. Like coming up, unless you turn, you're going to slam into sin. And when we see it's there, then we can make the right choice and become more like Jesus. Of course, sometimes we override that signal and we go crashing into sin anyway, even though we know it's there. Then the Holy Spirit will point out that we messed up. But he's not doing it in order to make us feel bad, but he's doing it to get us pointed in the right direction again. So we'll respond to that prompt. And of course, just like a car, sometimes we can get a false signal, you know, like an overactive, guilty conscience. Maybe you grew up being criticized constantly, and so everything you do feels wrong. And so you have this, this sense of being guilty, even though it's not a situation where you should feel guilty. Then other times, on the flip side, we are oblivious to our sin. When we should feel a sense of guilt, we just don't notice it. And so we need the Holy Spirit to give us an accurate view of what is right and what is wrong. And we need to rely on the scriptures because they give us an objective understanding of God's will and his plan for our lives with him. The Holy Spirit empowers us to recognize sin. The Holy Spirit also empowers us to change behavior. The word in the Bible is repent. It, repenting means changing our minds, but not only that, not only recognizing that what we did was wrong, but also changing directions. Stop going sin's way and go God's direction instead. When we're being transformed into the image of Jesus, it requires God's power to do that. But it also requires our willingness. It, it's kind of like a dance where you have two partners and God has his role that he plays, and we have our role to play. Our part is to be willing to change. We don't have the power in ourselves, but the Holy Spirit will only enter and give us that power when we welcome him. God is not going to force us into it, but he will help us change if we are open to it. A.W. Tozer said, God will take nine steps toward us, but he will not take the tenth. He will invite us to repent, but he cannot do our repenting for us. That's our responsibility, responding to everything that he has done. If we're willing to change, we need to take that step. We need to take an action whatever that action is in your life. The, power, the Holy Spirit will empower us to change our behavior. We need to ask the Spirit to fill us, to fill us and to direct us. When we do that, the Holy Spirit will produce his fruit inside of us. You know, the best way to avoid that sin barrier is not by focusing on the sin we need to avoid, but to focus on the fruit that we desire. Walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Only the Spirit of God can empower us to live the life of God. Only the power of the Holy Spirit can shape us and can transform us into the image of Jesus. So open yourself to him. Invite him to fill you and to direct you. And do this regularly. This is not a one-time-and-done thing. This is something we need to constantly do. Do it daily. Do it every time you sense that, that you're stumbling. Ask the Spirit to fill you and to change you. Let's do that now. God, we're grateful that you have reached out to us. And we admit that often we don't want to turn over our, the direction of our lives to you. Help us today to respond to your prompts. We pray that you would give us clarity to, to see sin and to recognize it in our lives so that we can turn away. Holy Spirit, give us the power we need to change our behaviors as you transform us. Spirit, we ask that you would fill us 
and direct us. We pray this in your name. Amen.